So let's look at these examples from your PowerPoints. Um, let's read the first one. Suppose the results of a survey showed that the distribution of the price of a single family home in Orange County has a mean of $400,000 and a standard deviation of $25,000. So what we're seeing here is we've given the mean and the standard deviation. In the first question, they says, if the distribution of home prices can be considered mound-shaped and symmetrical, um, what percentage of single-family homes in Orange County will have a price between three hundred and fifty thousand and four hundred and fifty? Well, mound-shaped and symmetrical is pretty much saying that we have this empirical rule because it applies to a normal distribution, which is mound-shaped and symmetrical. We know that the mean is four hundred thousand, four hundred thousand, and the standard deviation here is twenty-five thousand. And we want the proportion of observations that are between 350 and 450. So, say 350,000 is here. I'll just put down 350k. So, I have to put all the zeros in. And 350 and 450k. So, this is a normal distribution. And so, that means we can apply the empirical rule. So, how many standard deviations is this? Uh, these two points above and below. Well, the standard deviation is 25,000. So if I take off 25,000, takes me to 375, and take off another 25,000, takes me to 350. If I add uh, 25,000, takes me up to 425, and I add another 25,000, takes me to 450. So I'm with, between plus and minus two, this is minus two standard deviations, and this is plus two standard deviations away from the mean. Um, so that means, uh, according to the empirical rule, if I'm within plus or minus two standard deviations away from the mean, um, I will observe ninety-five percent of the observations in that range. So this is how quickly you can solve problems um, if you know the rules. That's the empirical. Let's look at the second one. If the shape of the distribution of home prices is highly skewed to the right, well, once it's skewed, whether it's to the right, I'll draw it to the right, or if it's skewed to the left, if it's skewed, if it's not a normal distribution, we can't use the empirical rule. So this is tipping us off that we should be using Chevy Chef. We want to find the percentage of single family homes that will have a price between 325 and 475. So 325 325,000 and 475,000 and I put the K for the thousands and we said that the mean is 400,000 put K's over here just to save some space and the standard deviation is 25,000 so how many standard deviations are we above and below the mean? Well, here we have to move one, two, three standard deviations. Three standard deviations is 75,000, which takes us to here. And three standard deviations, three times 25, is another 75,000, which gets us to here. So we have a non-normal distribution. So we're going to use Chevy Chef within plus or minus three standard deviations. And to solve that according to Chevy Chef, we use one minus one over z squared and express that as a percentage, which means we multiply that by 100%. So that's going to be 1 minus 1 over, we said plus or minus 3 standard deviations squared. And we're going to multiply that by 100%. And that is actually going to give us a value of 88 point nine percent so the proportion of homes that are between these two values is 88.9 percent so we have uh, a few more examples in this set of notes let's see if we can knock them out just using the rules that we're aware of i'm just going through the past the solutions of what we just solved so we have some questions here 
uh, results of a survey revealed that the distribution of the amount of the monthly utility bill of a three-bedroom house using gas or electric energy had a mean of $97 and a standard deviation of $12. 1. If the distribution of monthly bills can be considered mound-shaped and symmetrical, so again, so mound-shaped and symmetrical, so these are bills, distribution is mound-shaped and symmetrical, what percentage of homes will have a monthly bill of more than 85 and less than 109? Well, we said that the mean for this one is 97. And the standard deviation, we're told, is 12. Yep, there, there you go. And because it's bell-shaped, mound-shaped, and we're able to use the empirical rule, and what the proportion of uh, observations or the, between 85 and 109. So how are we going to solve that? Well, how many standard deviations is that? So we can actually go to the number of standard deviations. Z is x minus the mean over the standard deviation. Now for this case, if we put now x is, do it down here, uh, 109 minus the mean of 97. And we divide that by the standard deviation, which is 12. That's going to be 12 over 12, which is plus 1. So basically, this is plus exactly one standard deviation above, and this is uh, 97 minus 85 is uh, going to be 12. So it's one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below. And according to the empirical rule, plus or minus one standard deviation is actually going to result in 68% of the observations. Part two. If nothing is known about the shape of the distribution of monthly bills, what percentage of homes will have a monthly bill between $61 and $133? So if we don't know anything about it, you could assume that it's a normal distribution, or you can just say, well, we're just going to assume that it's not a normal distribution. Um, if we assume it's not a normal distribution, it may be skewing some direction or doing something strange, but it's not normal. And because, okay, the mean is 97, the standard deviation is 12, and we need to find um, the percentage of homes that have a monthly bill between $61 and 133. So 61 is here, 133 is here, and we're going to basically use Chevy Chef. We're going to actually assume we don't have a normal distribution. Um, for Chevy Chef to work, we don't have a normal distribution. It cannot be one standard deviation above and below. It must be a different number to one. And however many standard deviations you go above, you must go below. These points must be equidistant from the mean. So again, we can use uh, z equals x minus mu over sigma, x minus the mean over the standard deviation to find how many standard deviations we are above or below. Or you can work it out. This happens to be how many... Um, 33, 36, this is from here to here is 36 and 36 divided by 12 is three standard deviations. This distance is also 36 from 97 down to 61 and again that means it's three standard deviations. You could have worked it out, let's just do one of them um, for the z, for the upper one. It's going to be 133 minus the mean of 97 divided by 12 and that's going to be 36 over 12 which is going to equal to 3 plus 3. So to solve that again we're just going to use Chevy Chef which would be 1 minus 1 over z squared times 100 percent and that's going to be 1 minus 1 over 3 squared which is going to be 9, so 1 minus 1 over 9, times 100%. And so similar to one we did in the previous set of examples, that's going to come to 89.9%. And finally, if the distribution of monthly bills can be considered mound-shaped and symmetric, which percentage of homes will have a monthly bill of more than $121.
So how are we going to do that? So it's fit in up here. So it's going to be bell shaped, and symmetrical, 97 here. That's the mean. The standard deviation is 12. And we want more than 121. Now this one looks a bit different. More than 121 is going to be this. Can we use the rules? Well, can we use the empirical rule? The answer is yes. How many standard deviations is that distance? So um, that distance from there to there, from 97 to 121, is 24. So this is in fact two standard deviations, given that the standard deviation is 12. For my empirical rule, I know the plus or two minus standard deviation will result in 95% of observations in this range right here. So I would have 95% of the observations in here. So that means I've got 5% left over, and I'm going to get 2.5% here, and 2.5% over here. So the probability, um, or what percentage of homes will be, will have a monthly bill of more than 121, is just going to be this, more than 121, which is going to be 2.5%.